Gaston Taro down like that. If Calzaki can make it go round, and here's what will hurt. 46 victories without a single loss. You wanted to go what's coming by? Oh, there it is. A record breaking 21 consecutive title defenses. And a decade long reign at the top. At the turn of the century, Joe Calzaghe ruled the super middleweight division with an iron fist. Oh, love me, took that. Even making Roy Jones Jr. look awkward. And yet, despite being one of the most dominant champions in history, the general public is barely familiar with this fiery Welshman's adventures. Oh, and he just knees buckled and went on his down! It's time to relive the journey of the Dragon, a musician's son from a small village who reached the pinnacle of fisticuffs. Keep him up, and, a left hand on the and rode off into the sunset undefeated. A street musician named Enzo arrived in the British Isles from Italy in 1969. Traveling through cities, he stopped in the capital of Wales, Cardiff, met a waitress in the very first cafe he walked into, and married her four weeks later. Soon the couple gave birth to their firstborn, destined to bring worldwide fame to the Calzaghe name. The family settled in a mining village with a population of 6,000 people. At the age of nine, Joe started attending a boxing club, an old building made of metal sheets. The conditions were harsh, but this austerity is precisely why the boy fell in love with pugilism. Initially, he trained under the guidance of the local coach, Paul Williams. First stepping into the ring, Calzaghe immediately stood out among his peers. Although visually unassuming, the slender teenager rarely went the full distance. When Joe was 18, his trainer retired, which led Calzaghe Sr. to take on the role of the chief corner man. The situation was complicated by the fact that Enzo's band was about to sign a contract with an American record company, but he turned down this opportunity in a heartbeat. The father gave up his dream for the sake of his sons. With his dad in the corner, Joe broke through to the national level. The explosive Southpaw became the British champion three times in a row. Moreover, each year he would move up and wait, conquering the kingdom's most prestigious tournament in three different divisions. In a span of five years in the amateurs, Calzaghe's win column surpassed 100. The boxing community appreciated the young prospect's talent, but couldn't come to terms with the fact that there was a musician in his corner, who had nothing to do with boxing. No matter how much those around him tried to persuade him, the son didn't abandon his father. So it's not, not going to work. You know, it's not going to work. You need to get a proper training, you need to get a professional trainer. But I knew my dad was the best trainer for me, and he went on pool there, training three world champions, you know, which was fantastic. So, yeah, I, we did feel the end of the dog, but I suited that. In late 1993, the 21-year-old Joe transitioned to the professional ranks. Joining the 168-pound super middleweight division, he showcased devastating power from early on. His very first fight. So it's, you know, it's still a, a tough test. The agile Welshman never stopped, mowing down opposition with a machine gun-like fire. He knows he can hurt, so now he's putting, he's throwing everything. Oh, he's got it again with the right hand. Young Calzaghe's style was built around dynamism. He rarely wasted time gathering data, going from zero to a hundred as soon as the bell rang. He's hurt again. As early as in the first round, the prodigy would enforce a pace that seemed impossible to keep up with. Instructed by a jazz man, Joe brought a special energy into the squared ring. Calzaki first 20 seconds. Minton under severe pressure here. Calzaki can hit from both. He converted music into strikes. Very smart, only is he. Setting a rhythm with swift combinations. Relentless. Calzaghe improvised on the fly. In the first minute or so of this first round. Striving to end each composition with a vibrant finale. Oh, 
Thus, Joe wandered through towns, rapidly enriching the resume. Is taking a thorough pounding here, and I think the referee is going to... He preferred to get things done quickly, usually wrapping it up within a round. Due to his Italian roots, fierce boxing style, and Welsh heritage, Calzaghi was bestowed the nickname, the Italian Dragon. And Mickey Van won't allow him to do this for too much longer. It's all over. Well, that's a winning point. Get up in the morning, rain, sleep, or snow, just go for a run, go to the gym, go home, come back and train again. That's it. Every day. Every single day. Having gone on a streak of 14 victories and claimed the British super middleweight title, in February 1996, the Dragon gave a cold welcome to the sturdy gatekeeper from the U.S., Guy Stanford. Warren Stove, with a decent record of 17 wins to two, started out strong. But soon regretted going out without a bulletproof vest and a helmet. Dangerous game Stowe's playing. Hope was his only weapon. Well, he's got tremendous hand speed, very accurate. Oh, and that's crazy by Stowe. Well, that, that, is, that, that is asking. Joe showed the way to operate with your hands down. <laughs> Unloaded in close quarters. To the body. And forced Warren to keep the guard up. The opponent now resembled more of a punching bag. So the one-sided beatdown was stopped between rounds. In the spring of 96, Calzaghi crossed paths with former world title challenger Pat Lawler. Joe set the pace with a distracting jab and bombarded all levels. By unsettling the opponent with feints, Calzaghi shut down any outbursts, picking apart the bewildered target. Lawler sought refuge in the corner, hoping to weather the shelling. I don't think he knows what to do, really. Under severe pressure in the corner. And even tried to run away. But there was no escape. Lucky for him, the ref stepped in. Well, now we see Lola complain, I'm sure, but... The official's assistance was also requested by Carlos Christie. Oh, the left hand, Dex Christie. The yet unbeaten Tyler Hughes couldn't touch the dragon. Yeah, nearly got it. Doing you any good, you're not learning anything. And the very first long combo annihilated him. Well, we can see some world-class punches. He's not too worried about what's coming back. Oh, there it is. So long. Now, many began to believe in the musician-turned-trainer's unique coaching style. Enzo himself commented on his conductor-like approach to boxing. Doesn't every song start off with a verse? Jab. After the verse, you're going to be late. Bring it forward. Minton under severe pressure here. Then you've got the chorus. One, two, three, four, five. We're well, working over here from Calzac in the first minute or so of this. Bam! Knockout pass. Stepping. But oh, goodness me, that one did not get. And so, within the first three and a half years, Joe secured 22 victories, all of them by way of knockout. Calzaghi was about to encounter a challenge that would determine his entire future career. Oh, the left hand. In the autumn of 1997, Joe was given the opportunity to capture the vacant WBO title. Across from him stood the former dominant king, Chris Eubank, who was once untouchable for over five years with 14 defenses. The charismatic Jamaican had collected nearly 50 scalps. So apprehensive. Oh! and was renowned for his superb timing. That first level, first Deliberately acting like the bad guy, he happily got on the younger contender's nerves in the lead up. <laughs> That's for the camera. <laughs> Is it my turn or are you right? Yeah. Really, uh, knocked out. Oh, well, Go I mean, listen, we'll see what happens, yeah? yeah? It took Joe 15 seconds to make an impact. A little bit, although he's had fast knockout, you think. Oh, the left hook on the deck. 
that he stood up as if to say, hey, don't count. The night me. promised to be short. Oh, get the hand, go. As the dragon performed the Ali shuffle. He tried to do a little Ali shuffle there. He took, he, oh, the, and casually the, fired from the hip. The in his case, Jack Taffy. Nevertheless, the savvy Eubank came back strong in the third stretch. That's it. That's it. And won the clinch battle. Boys, he wants to stand and trade now. The crowd. Quieting the critics in the crowd. He began unshipping heavy cargo. Yet Calzaghi was more precise. I mean, at times, I mean, it's just remarkable. And didn't let the initiative slip away. Obviously, he was knocked down, but he, he looked so full in control. All that Tensions kept rising halfway through the bout. Anyway. He'll slug it out with him, you I tell you, he'll go down fighting whatever happens. Oh, that's it. This is leading the boxers to lock horns more often. Oh, they've been out the ring. Oh, that's his own thing. You, you can almost look like they were dipping there. We don't want the lights out put out accidentally. Oh, what a good scrap now. The chess game at close range. He always said he could do the 12 stone limit. With that. Gradually fell under the Welshman's control. This is how broke away though. He's come up then to the end of the sixth round. And now he'll fight back the whole way there, Eubanks. And he's got to fight his way out of trouble there. And he's doing it. And the Calzaghi countered the incoming attacks and disrupted Eubanks' rhythm with patented flurries. To duck below those. Now that's, he enjoys doing that, definitely is throwing more punches. Oh, good shot. That might have been a turning point there, that left hook. She's falling into him. What a brave, what a brave character though, Eubank. Still light on his feet. In the 10th round, he caught the veteran coming in. Scored around that actually. Oh yes. The floating dragon continued to build on the advantage in the championship rounds. He could do that. Now, now Eubank in the last round. You can hear that noise of that. While Eubank clung to hope until the very end. And a good rally too by Calzaghi. Wants to finish looking the part. And he nearly nails Calzaghi. Eubank nearly nails him. Joe secured a clear unanimous decision victory and got the belt around his waist at 25 years old, marking the beginning of a new chapter in the undefeated Dragon's career. Joe Kalsaki, world champion. How does that sound? Sounds brilliant, you know, all the hard work I've done. I just thank God. Obviously, I thank my dad. I thank all the fans who come to support me tonight. Having defended the throne twice in early 1999, Joe faced off against former WBC champion Robin Reed. The Olympic bronze medalist captivated women to screens and fully justified the Grim Reaper moniker. The chiseled challenger was sweating testosterone. So the Welshman focused on the midsection forcing Reed to miss. Calzaghi worked both floors. And kept the counterpart at bay with the lead hand. Reed struggling a little with the big tall man to get inside 12 stone. Both fighting for the first time in 10 months. Struggling to keep up with the lightning quick Joe early. In the fifth frame, Reed found an opening for a right hand cannon. And began acting dirty. The champion's matters further deteriorated as he injured his left hand, which forced him to start fencing. Albeit quite effectively. In response, Reed infringed on Joe's reproductive rights, Andrew Galata style. And was deducted a point. Galzaghi got back to using the lead hand. 
trying to maintain distance. The challenger was catching him nonetheless. The dragon eventually had to deviate from the plan. By engaging in an all-out brawl. Before the last round, the fighters acknowledged each other's efforts and continued to burn their gray matter reserves. Everybody, I think, knows this is a close, close fight. Take your hand off the knees to, to be in the condition. The artillery duel didn't subside until the closing seconds. In the end, two of three judges favored Calzaghi. It's worth noting that pundits also sided with the incumbent, who simply won more rounds, increasing his number of defenses to five within a year. In the summer of 2000, Joe faced the young contender, Omar Sheikha, with a record of 20 and one. The dragon wasn't shy to hang in the dead zone. Sheikha trying to get in close with And wreaked havoc with the left hand. Good left from Calzaghi. Sheikha showed a good chin up to now. Sheikha would retaliate. He's tried to come back with rights of his own. Putting his entire body into combinations. Take a pound and a half off yesterday before the weigh-in. Yet Calzaghi's composure remained unwavering. Feeling the weight of some of these shots. He has the room. It's devastating. As the champion struck with surgical precision. In the fifth, the contender went all in, blasting from every barrel. Weathering the storm, Joe kept piercing with single shots. His face is becoming a bloody mess. Before finally agreeing to swang and bang. The wild man Sheka asked for more. But the ref didn't want to go to jail for malpractice and decided to intervene. And it's been stopped. It's over. Perhaps slightly prematurely. Calzaghi, a brilliant performance. Next, former title holder Richie Woodhall gave it a go, hoping to shine in a farewell match. Calzaghi quickly found an opening for the lead hook. Very good friends. Oh, right hand, and that's hurt Woodhall. There's the power. While also mixing targets on it. Well, he's picking his punches well, Calzaghi. And punishing the challenger's jab. For him fighting against a southpaw again. He's Woodhall tried to turn the tide after the break. Defense Woodhall hits him with the right hand right at the start of the round. Took Calzaghi a bit by surprise. Now initiating attacks with the right against a southpaw. Good body shot from Woodhall. And again. He found much more success. Terrific right hand. And problem with the right hand. He's going to throw it. And it's working for him in this round. This is Woodall's round. He's really opening up here. Another. As the rounds progressed, the champion upped the pressure. <laughs> Diversified his approach with lead uppercuts. level changes about that one. and employed combinations at last trying to meet fire with fire Woodhall Woodhall's right still troubled him Getting better as the rounds go on so under the watchful eye of Gordon Ramsay Calzaghi showed his liver steak family recipe reaching out for full blown record Woodhall Getting trapped. But Calzaghi and the weight, it's a really big problem for him to get down to. Albeit showered by enemy missiles, the springy Woodhall refused to give up. Woodhall steps it up here. He's really lifted himself in this round. Woodhall, normality against a fired up 
and inspired Woodall who's there again with the right hand. That's when Joe went all out. He was hurt by that, wasn't he? He sagged from that punch. That took a bit out of Woodall. Punch of the round for me, there was that straight left of Calzaghi's which really... Got the left hand going. These combinations together really well. Ass really... And snuck in the lead uppercut again. Oh, and he just knees buckled to Woodall and he's down! Down he goes right at the end of a round. And he looks hurt and tired up at eight. The bell allowed the Englishman to see the tenth round. Desperate, the challenger surged forward. But Calzaghi had already spun the deadly windmill. Now, would always lucky that he was on the floor late in the previous round time. But Calzaghi now is pouring in the punches and looking for the stoppage. And he's going to stop it. The ref saved Woodhall from complete shattering into splinters. He's going in to try and take him out. And I thought that was a... Joe had defended the belt for the seventh time, but was no longer as dominant as before. WBO super middleweight champion of the world. He threw fewer punches and quieted down the backhand cannon, now relying mostly on his right. The reason was the nagging wrist and elbow injuries. Unlike Joe's first 22 outings, where only one rival made it to the eighth round, now Calzaghi would lose the initiative more often. You don't want to mention the hand trouble, but we were wondering in the fight, because you seem to revert to your boxing skills quite early on. Has the hand gone again? Calzaghi kicked off the year of 2001 with a dismantling of the WBO's top-ranked contender, the unbeaten Mario Veit. The German ate a step-back left hand out of the gate, and Joe gave an encore. In the fall, the Dragon faced regional belt holder Will McIntyre. Due to recurring hand injuries, the champion took some stank off his punches. Slapping with quick combos instead. And punishing mistakes. Meanwhile, he introduced the jab. Sounds like he's beating into everything. Yeah, so at this point, no way. Which perfectly set up the laser sharp yeah, left. Excellently. You know, there's no head movement at oh, all. He's, he's hurt him. now. Left uppercut all over the place. I am the best fighter in Super Middleweight. I want Roy Jones. I want Bernard Hopkins. He wants to look in for a fight. Hey, I'm ready. Extending his title defense streak to 11 over the next year, in the summer of 2003, the 31-year-old Joe came upon former WBA champion Byron Mitchell. Armed with a newly tattooed cross, the Dragon initiated the siege, breathing fiery flurries. He never missed a beat, sticking to the proven tactic of overwhelming volume. Really getting on top here late in the fight. He certainly was. Some good, solid shots. He's got him again with that right hook. In the second round, Calzaghi vigorously pursued the finish. Who buys for Joe as world number one. And he's not. And got a bit overzealous. Okay. And he's down goes Calzaghi. Caught by one, and that's the first time he's been down in his. Tasting the canvas for the first time in 36 performances, he didn't shell up in the corner. He shots on another left hand. He's staggered under this, and he wants to go to war, and he gets him in the chip. Emerging victorious from a duel of smoking barrels, Joe switched into turbo mode. forcing the referee to save Mitchell from evisceration. Surely can't go on that as he collapses and he's stopped all over in two dramatic rounds. When it came to a battle of wills, Calzaghi always proved to be an entirely different beast. Surely can't go on that as he collapses and he's stopped all over. Joe kept the belt safe and sound fighting in his homeland of Wales. The promising prospect, Ngur Mukherjee, ate jabs for six rounds straight. Wading away a bit 
wildly. Soon, maybe even the return of Felix Trinidad we're hearing later on in the year. Walking into a check hook each time he advanced. Really increases popularity. Planting the lead hand once more. His way to victory tonight. That's a big right hand. It was fast and shove. It's hurt. Calzaghe closed the show with a trademark combination. The dragon wasn't always so composed, though. The trickster, Kabari Salim, moved his head. Plus the ten from Joe Hamas. If he gets caught with a good punch, he went straight back and never hit her. In uh, mysterious ways. And cut the champion. Well, he's getting a great reception here in Edinburgh. Another clash of heads on the inside. Kalsaki's got some. Joe decided to punish the headbutting contender. Clocked him with a well-timed check hook. Rolled the response off the shoulder. And initiated a hot-headed assault. Salim was swinging wildly and nearly managed to cash in. Calzaghi learned his lesson and spent the following eight rounds playfully dissecting the Egyptian boxer. Pedology, I think Quiet fifth. This is round six. In a rugged fight. Right hand warning again from Kabari Salim. He has to keep his gloves up while he's doing this. Pick the shots, but that's a Calzaghi. To the delight of the fans, the Welshman ramped up the pace and dropped the challenger twice in the final two rounds. Some tonight. Oh, God, that would have been the end of it. One of the great one point very retro knockout here. Again, good left hand from Kalzaghi. And this time. Salim survived to see the bell, losing by a wide margin. In the spring of 2005, Kalzaghi gave a rematch to Mario Veit, whom he defeated four years prior. Since then, the German had ran through 15 men in a row and was eager to avenge his only loss. The champion peppered the jab to disguise the left cross. Oh, well, nice again. Full marks though to Mario Veit, who's uh, sticking with this one very gamely. Paying special attention to the midsection. Kalzaghi is undoubtedly winning it. In the fifth round, Calzaghi took the pressure up a notch. Very measured performance this at the moment. And caught the foe on the retreat. Oh, a lovely left hook there. Terrific punch. Eight years have passed, but the crown still belonged to the dragon. By 2006, Calzaghe had reached a record of 41-0 with a remarkable 17 WBO title defenses under his belt. But despite this impeccable resume, the US media viewed the champion from Europe with skepticism. The state of the matters was finally set to change with a unification bout against the IBF belt holder, Jeff Lacey. The American snatched over 20 souls. That's not the attention of Wiggins. Had never tasted defeat. Hand to the body, but he's never been in against a guy like Lacey. And down he goes again. And was marketed as a smaller version of Mike Tyson. <laughs> the hype surrounding him was so immense that in the lead up to the clash, Calzaghe opened as an underdog for the first time ever. The linear championship was also on the line. Aware of the power threat, Joe's father devised a movement-based game plan. And then content to. The Welshman would fire off a combo. Then quickly step out of range. And move in guns blazing. But it's a 12 round fight and a little contemptuous smile from He also unloaded in the clinch, just like he used to do in the early career stages. Again from Calzaghe, picking the shot well, and nothing coming back in there from Lacey. It's all Cal Lacey was swinging sledgehammers. Looking for headshots, these are the danger punch. Oh, good shot from Calzaghe, short, straight left. But Lacey into his face, those are low punches, surely. Yeah, this is getting... But Calzaghe ducked under them with ease. Calzaghe's going to have to fight his way out of the corner. 
doesn't want to be in that sort of toe -to -toe. Then Joe would make the foe spin. Lovely combination, and it spins off and leaves Lacey to hit in thin air. Outmaneuvering him with hands down. The American clearly couldn't decipher the rhythmic flow of the fight. Very pedestrian, very one paced. You know, like all punches escape from Kalzagi. That is exceptional. Absolutely exceptional. One, two, three, passing. Go, go. Kalzagi just goes missing. Jeff's face was getting busted with the lead hand. Well, there was scar tissue coming into it. And subsequent combinations. He put it in the ball. Alex, another Kalzagi round. And look at this. Terrific work from Kalzagi. Very slow to get out. In close quarters, Kalzagi employed the left uppercut. While piercing with a stinging jab from range. I'm seeing Joe Calzani of admiration. Lacey's punches are very quick flurries shattered Lacey's defenses, eroding the favorite's aura of invincibility. His lower lip. Oh, headshots, tension, if not fear of what might be. The check hook was also in play. And I was so used to seeing him. And the dragon didn't slow down even past the halfway point. I think something in the region of 40 punches all constantly changing angles. Headshots, all scoring shots from Kalsaki. He decisively claimed round after round. All the while toying with an opponent who could barely see. He's treating Lacey with contempt. That is World title fight. I think Lacey would have been out of that. Against Calzaghi's surgical work, oh, superb again. Lacey appeared helpless. Every time, out boxed, out punched, out maneuvered. To his credit, he withstood over 300 punches. Well, it's not oh, a career he's ending gone. fight. He's this is never going to be the same again after this, I don't think. He's got nothing left, John. He's got nothing left. The referee ought to be stepping in to stop this one. And through. Can Calzaghi take him out even at this late stage? and even got up from a knockdown in the final stretch. Lacey says, come on. Lacey just went down for the first time in his career. Jeff was nearly out on his feet, but managed to last until the end. Oh, is Lacey staying up there? How is he getting out of there? Well, that's it. It's all over. Lacey comes for Prior to the bout, most sports media predicted Joe would lose for the first time. Disrespected and underestimated, he delivered the best career performance to date, decisively dismantling the rising American star and claiming the second title, the Welshman made the U.S. audience take him seriously. Enzo Calzaghi played a crucial role in the triumph, not only devising an effective game plan, but also convincing his son not to pull out of the bout. As it turned out, Joe's left hand got badly hurt just 10 days before the encounter, and his father persuaded him to fight through it. I was in great shape, thanks to my dad. He is, without him I wouldn't be here today. He's a great trainer, great dad, love him a bit. Um, you know, I started to doubt myself a little bit. Yeah, I think if I can't fight this guy with one hand, no matter what, I'm proud of you. But you have to fight this fight. You have to fight this fight, Joe. He said, trust me, this is going to make you this fight. And I think, Dad, I can't fight this guy. Why are we talking about this? This is going to be the easiest fight. This guy's going to make you. This guy moves five times and throws one punch. You throw five punches and move once. With three belts on the wall, Joe defended them twice and at the age of 35 had no intentions of slowing down. In the spring of 2007, he went on a quest for the missing straps. The undefeated Danish boxer, Mikkel Kessler, had a resume of 30 plus finishes. Was seven years younger. On a streak of 39 victories, and most importantly, possessed the WBA and WBC titles. The showdown between the division's elite with a combined record of 82-0 drew the attention of the entire boxing community. The bout took place in the Dragon's backyard. Toughest night of his career where a crowd of 50,000 spectators gathered to support their hometown hero. Well, the biggest boxing contest. Joe began by feeling out the distance. still feels this. And probing with long hooks. Here comes Kalzagi again. Meanwhile, Kessler employed a cross as a rangefinder. 
in the history quite effectively at times. Turning pro. The hand speed. Oh, well, that's good work by Kessler. The first couple of rounds were close. In the third, the Dragon stress tested Kessler's torso. Way back at the start of last year. No. Pressed on the gas. And then Kozagi wants to get a little bit low with that left hand, and the pace has suddenly picked up a little bit. Now, who will that suit? His hands down stance signaled that he had found the groove. Too far away with the left hand. Well, how confident is Kalzaghi, the 35-year-old EO champion? He's really loving that. Was a good Joe's signature combinations got going, but the Dane held strong. Kalzaghi coming forward, but got himself caught. He walked onto him. Kessler started calibrating the right uppercut. Exchange for Kessler there. And another one. Didn't forget the classic one-two. Faster hands. Ultimately, securing the fourth frame. Oh, that uppercut. The yeah. chess match continued into the fifth. Bro. The best British boxer of all time, certainly in terms of his record. More crisp now, he's not leaving anything to chance. Back to a much more settled routine. Calzaghi was more precise in exchanges. Oh, good shot. And abandoned caution by the midpoint, opening up more often. By the right glove of Calzaghi, that was a good right though from Kessler. And Kessler's coming back. Kessler would not shell up either. Kessler coming back strongly now. In the eighth stretch, Calzaghi clipped Kessler's body. Trying to set his man up. Oh, that was a good shot by And moved in with bad intentions. But a blow to the back of the head prompted the referee's action. Don't hit Feeling an adrenaline rush, the dragon took command of the space. Increasing his punch count with each passing minute. Hands dropping a little bit. If you, the style of fat Joe is. He gave the opponent no room to breathe. Applaud. Knowledgeable crowd. Making him swing at air. I think he is. To outbox Kalzaghi, and even if he takes. Before coming back with punishment. Past the halfway point, and from that uh, body shot, Kalzaghi has been. Pretty to win. He showed power, he showed skill, he showed ability. No matter how hard Kessler tried to turn things around with a Hail Mary. Good right hand. Good right hand. It was the night of Joe Calzaghi. I know you've got the fight one. You win it. I think Kessler maybe has taken this last round, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Well. Over the course of 12 rounds, the Dragon threw over 1,000 punches, getting the upper hand with a significant lead on all the judges' scorecards. A decade after capturing his first title, Joe had collected all the belts and reached the undisputed champion status. The Welshman entered the top five pound for pound list, sharing the honor with guys like Mayweather and Pacquiao. Kessler would go on to capture the throne once again. He won't hurt you. What did that do? And he and Calzaghi are on good terms to this day. I thought to myself, I think if I lose, man, I don't think about losing, man. I can never show my face in cards again. <laughs> It carry me out, mate. As I said, I hate watching my fight when I lose, but this is good. This is okay. Oh, thank you, this is okay, man. I lost the fight. But I tried everything. Good I'm fight, my man. Good fight, too. <laughs> Leaving nothing but scorched earth in the super middleweight division and defending his throne a record 21 times, Calzaghi made the decision to move up to light heavyweight. Eager to secure a big fight in the USA, Joe traveled to Las Vegas, where he purposely engaged in a war of words with Bernard Hopkins. During the exchange, Hopkins dropped a phrase that instantly transformed their duel into one of the most anticipated matchups of the year. I would never let a white boy be me. Lose. If you fight, you will lose. If you fight me, you will lose. I never let a white boy lose. Huh? And you can call in any statement you want. Anybody can put that I will never lose to a white person. I can't wait, man. Known by the ominous nickname The Executioner, Hopkins took up boxing in prison already in his 20s. After being released, he dedicated himself to the sport, ultimately becoming an undisputed world champion in the middleweight division. With a 10-year-long unbeaten streak and 20 defenses of the IBF belt, he was the first to defeat one of the top boxers of the 1990s, Felix Trinidad. 
and knocked out the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya. Only after losing all of his titles to Jermaine Taylor by close decisions in 2005, did Bernard move up to light heavyweight. At the age of 42, he snatched the championship belt from Antonio Tarver. The same Tarver who had recently shocked the world by proving that Roy Jones Jr. was, in fact, human. Thus, the executioner once again ascended to the top of the food chain, surpassing the Welshman in the pound-for-pound -pound rankings. Moreover, this would be Calzaghe's first fight in the USA, adding an extra layer of intrigue. Every red-blood American is going to be happy with the outcome. I'm going to kick his British ass come here tonight. Watch out for headbutts. However, nobody predicted that lightning would strike in the very first minute of the match. Calzaghe walked right into a 1-2 that sat him down. It seemed that Hopkins' counterpunching style would be an insurmountable obstacle. But this wasn't the first time that the Dragon got burned taking off. He started bombing the basement. Switched to the upper level and never stopped trying to crack Bernard's defense. Something because Calzaghe's always been able... Because you have the numbers doesn't mean you won the round. Crafty Hopkins stayed close to the ropes, waiting for the opportunity to counter. ...and face each other in the ring. The one in tight advantage we do. Punch evasion was an innate ability for both athletes. But he doesn't have any power. His punches are just a little flurries. And... So there weren't many clean connections in the first half. By moving and boxing in and out a little bit, he could fight a much smaller fight. Now Calzaghe starts to get the kind of spirited combat he wants. After the sixth round, Calzaghe Sr. chimed in, urging his son to step it up. And I'm telling you now, do you want him to stop you? Or you want to stop him? That's the fucking way it's gonna go. That's the way it's gonna go. Are you with me now? Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Following the advice, the dragon unleashed the cross. One point difference because he's back to Antoine Elkins. I thought was his. Exploded with a couple of trademark combos. Hopkins' fight offensively is to go hit it as Calzaghe is doing. And soon found his rhythm. But he's still out of the good. From Bernard is having a time. He's been trying to tap. Trying to apply pressure. Trying to speed the tempo of the fight. Trying to make the 43. The executioner was swinging the axe down the pipe. Early party. Avoiding dangerous shootouts. Hopkins gets in. And from the 10th round onwards, began looking for a breather. And down goes Hopkins on a low blow. No point deduction so far. Or a way to have a point deducted from his adversary. Joe kept the pedal to the metal, and some of his shots were hitting the mark. Cortez says, go right ahead and fight. Before the 12th, the Welshman started complaining and received a wake-up call. Is he cheating? He's my ass. Don't worry about a cheat. What he's doing is what the f are you doing? Another motivational speech later, Calzaghe made a final surge. Mike only looked in the first few rounds as though it was more than... And won in the closing minutes. And they fight past the bell. Ultimately, I think it was a pro Calzaghe house. As is often the case, the two grandmasters delivered a 12-round contest that was hard to judge with the naked eye. One official sought for Hopkins, whereas the other two sided with Calzaghe. Joe landed 232 punches, more than anyone else ever did in Hopkins' career. Cortez says, go right ahead and fight. Upon a thorough analysis, the majority of experts agreed with the verdict. Calzaghe hit the target more frequently, controlled the center throughout the bout, and conceded only three or four rounds. Now, no one could deny him as one of the elites in the world of boxing. The Dragon himself labeled this duel as one of the toughest he'd ever had. Yeah, as, as I felt I had energy, but it was very difficult to pin uh, Bernard down. I knew that. You know what, like fighters coming to me. He was very wily, very clever, holding on the inside. You know, listen, 
the guy's been around so many years and you just said to me that I land more punches than any other opponent, so I'm pretty proud of that. Following victory number 45, Joe figured it was time to hang it up. His hands were so mangled he could barely hit the heavy bag, even with padded gloves. However, Calzaghe couldn't pass up the opportunity to share the ring with Roy Jones Jr. Like one of those jet pilots. In his heyday, Superman was the undisputed king at light heavyweight. And was a true genius of the sweet science. Thing I don't like about Percy Harris, and there he's down. Despite being long in the tooth, he entered the bout on a streak of three, still a viable player. The, right hand, down goes the rendezvous took place at Madison Square Garden, where thousands of Welsh fans gathered to cheer their compatriot as he called it quits. <laughs> the spectators had barely taken to their seats when a deja vu swept over the arena. Jones is quicker in the center of the ring, and down goes Calzaghe. Jones's forearm caught Calzaghe ducking, making him reset on the floor. But, but Joe countered Roy's lunging attack Badly hurt then against Hopkins. And, and got the jab going by the end of the round. With which to begin the fight. This is the second stretch saw the volume increase. The fight. If Calzaghe can make it go round, and here's what will hurt yep. Jones most if it keeps up. And it was all Calzaghe by the third. Good body shot by Calzaki. Left hand. Jones struggled to keep up. Over the last half round or so. Getting outperformed even in his favorite hands by the waist genre. Six. And that's what I'm saying. He experienced the taunting he used to enact himself. Very, very difficult to just take pleasure from a stunt tower down like that. Calzaki showboating in the center of the ring. Calzaki taking Jones's punches much better now. And landing when he fires back. Although trying to fight back. And that he can swap Jones with punch count from here. He has done. At times, it was as if Roy was boxing his younger self. With his hand up down. In round three. Calzaghe's advantage grew with each passing minute. Outside of the first round, he's won, even though. He pressed Jones against the ropes with jabs. Joe is standing as he is now with his guard down. Then unleashed fast combinations to different levels. Coming into the fight. A fighter who is come this round may be on the table with 50 seconds to go. Calzaki yeah. yep. Now the round belongs to the Welshman. Yep. Jones lands on the, the American occasionally delivered the signature cross. It looks like it's having a tremendous effect on and uppercut. The tactical equation in his favor takes a big uppercut there. But missed more often than not. It makes him there it is again. Losing the battle in close. And uh, solid left hand right, by Calzaki oh, follows it up with a couple of body shots. Another flurry by Calzaki. To the ropes. Roy may be momentarily hurt. He's hurt. He's hurt. Straight left. He also suffered a cut. With the constant assault. Which threw his aim off completely. Again, the hand speed flurries by Calzaki. Now the once untouchable Roy was seeking a fifth corner of the ring. The left hook. Away again. He's swapping Jones with Actic and turns it all around by hurting Kalzaki and Kalzaki. In the championship rounds, the Dragon continued to pepper half-hearted punches. Probably something. To and the action increasingly resembled a shutout. These pictures. He hopes to win. So far, maybe he's thrown that. Calzaghe couldn't care less about the opponent by the end, enjoying his last moments in boxing. What would enhance it even more, I think, is if in this last 45... For what might be the last time in the ring for both men. Joe claimed all the rounds except the first, leaving no room for uncertainty. This time he landed 344 punches, more than any of Roy Jones's previous adversaries. Despite a near-perfect performance, many criticized Calzaghe for excessive showboating that prevented him from securing a knockout. However, as the boxer himself later admitted, he had no desire to end it early. I could have stopped Roy. And people said to me, why are you showing up dropping you? No, I was, I was, if you say I was enjoying myself because I knew it was my last fight. And I remember counting down the rounds. I remember, come on Joe, I remember it, it's beautiful, you know, and uh, that was that, you know what I mean? I was happy to do the 12 rounds and just beautiful. 
On February 5th, 2009, shortly before turning 37, Joe officially announced his retirement from the sport. Leaving the ring as a reigning champion with an impeccable record of 46-0, he joined the elite club of legends alongside Rocky Marciano. In 2014, Calzaghe was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. His father, Enzo, who raised two more world champions aside from Joe, also retired from coaching but maintained his lively spirit till the end. Calzaghe Sr. passed away on September 17, 2018, three months short of turning 70. Inspired to keep the family legacy going, Joe and his two sons decided to rejuvenate their old gym, which had turned into a museum in recent years. After extensive renovations, they started teaching boxing to young kids in their community. Now, the Calzaghe's bring up a new generation of Welsh fighters. I know what so bad I went like. If it wasn't for my dad, I would never be boxing in the first place. You know, he's the one that took me to the gym. It's, 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 I'm, I'm so lucky that my dad's been able to sort of share what I went through, go through these fights, and you know, beautiful memories. Calling Joe Calzaghe a household name would be a stretch. He mostly fought on home soil and only ventured to the U.S. later in his career. Despite all that, the undefeated Italian dragon certainly earned a place in the boxing pantheon. Over the course of 15 years, he collected all the titles in his weight class. Oh, and he just knees buckled and went on and he's down! Defended the throne a staggering 21 times in a row. That pass knocked out to the Oh! The left hook. Placing him in the top five all time by this metric. You wanted to go one coming by. Oh, there it is. So long. Oh, good. Oh, good. And retired at the top, which is extremely rare in the world of fisticuffs. While he might have lacked mainstream appeal, the Welshman never pursued it, choosing to stay true to himself, a boxer with a music-like flow. A true champion and a loving son. Okay. How would you like to be remembered? Just, just a great fighter. I always wanted to entertain as well, you know. Never, never shied away from a fight. And even when I got hurt, I always come back for more. Even if I got dropped, I always come straight back at the opponent. I always fought in my heart on my sleeve, you know, and I always wanted to entertain. If you enjoyed the video, punch the like button, and most importantly, appreciate your parents. He's taking a thorough pounding here, I think. It's a terrible start for the German who's caught again. Play another!